Peace and blessings everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Albert and in this episode we have the Jaguar XF R Sport. Now this car is the facelift version of the old XF which came out in 2007 and the facelift version of that came into production in 2011. Now this car is a 2015 and after this one they replaced it with the new XF with the new XF 260 this being the 250 model for enthusiasts now I have to tell you straight from the beginning that due to the fact that this is an R Sport looks very aggressive and let's find out what are the differences between this one and the previous version so first of all this one got new headlights a new front grille a redesigned front end to look more aggressive and uh, well, uh, a little bit more stylish. Let's have a chat about the front end of the car. Immediately you notice this front grille with a mesh pattern over here that gives the car a sporty and aggressive look. Also, the front grille is surrounded by this chrome finish that gives the car a touch of elegance. Proudly in the middle sits the Jaguar badge. Now, one thing that immediately you notice at this facelift is the front bumper, which been completely redesigned to add to the car's overall sporty look but not just on either sides you got bigger air intakes to improve the car's cooling system but also giving the car a very aggressive stance the headlights have been completely redesigned and are sleek and angular now these have the led daytime running lights right over here these also have xenon adaptive lights which gives the car a modern touch and not only but also improves the visibility at nighttime. Let's talk about the hood because you can see these beautiful lines that the hood has and also one thing that I like is the fact that right in the middle the hood is a little bit pointed up which gives the car a very dynamic look and also a very aggressive stance. Right here we have some chrome finish elements that gives the car a luxurious feel as well this car doesn't have parking sensors in the front it only has rear parking sensors and right here we have the headlight washers now I have to tell you that overall the front end of the Jaguar XF facelift is very aggressive looks mean and looks like it's about to tear apart the competition the car that I have here I got it from my friends at CarZ. CarZ are a specialized second-hand car dealership located in Ipswich. All the cars come with six months RAC warranty which is extendable up to three years. If you want to part exchange your car they can help you with that. If you have a low credit score and you need finance, CarZ can provide finance as well. And if you want your car to be delivered all the way across UK, well you know who to call or who to visit. Visit CarZ at carz.co.uk engine wise this car has a 2.2 ford engine uh, dura torque which well actually is not that bad it's not as noisy as you might think and well it has 187 horsepower 450 newton meters and thanks to its automatic eight speed gearbox provided by zf manages to go from 0 to 60 in 8.5 seconds and also has a good fuel consumption it has around 50 miles per gallon on open roads, which isn't bad. Overall, this engine provides the power and the fuel consumption that you need to go from 
point A to point B without any headaches. Now, of course, uh, a couple of people are talking about some problems regarding this engine, but I have to tell you one thing. If you do your services in time and if you change the oil in time and regularly, you won't have any issues with the engines because they are quite durable engines and Ford creates, well, not anymore, they created durable engines. But nevertheless, this is a quite good engine to have. To be honest with you, I would have preferred the three liter diesel engine or the five liter petrol turbocharged. Now that would be the car to get, but well, this one is not bad at all. And I have to tell you that it's very economical, it's fun to drive and it's not noisy on the inside. Let's discuss about the side of the car because, well, it's as elegant and aggressive as the rest of it. First of all, immediately you notice the 18 inch wheels, which they look quite good and have this beautiful spoke pattern that apparently seems to split right in the middle of the first spoke, which is quite interesting. Now on the side here, we have the Jaguar badge, the R Sport badge and a small air intake but i think this is a fake air intake but nevertheless it looks quite quite cool right here we have the mirrors which they have been integrated with a led turn signal overall the side of the car is very aggressive is very dynamic looks like it's moving even when it's standing still and there's another thing that i want to mention these side skirts they look insanely good it gives the car a very very sporty feel and complements the rest of the sportiness that this car showcases right here on the door handle you can notice a small key which means that this car has keyless entry and also keyless go which well it's impressive because this one was made in 2011 well not the specific one because this one is a 15 plate but nevertheless you understand what i'm saying right over here we have the antenna for the gps and for the radio and it looks kind of cool but I noticed that all car manufacturers adopted this shark fin. Well, their decision. Anyway, it looks cool. So overall, the side of the car looks very good, very sporty, dynamic, and showcases the luxuriousness that this car has. What do you notice when you look at a rear end of a Jaguar XF? First of all, you will notice this. This chrome line that, well, unites the two tail lights together I have to tell you that gives the car a very elegant touch. The tail lights have also been refreshed. Now they have LED lights inside them and they do have a nice pattern when they light up. They improve visibility at nighttime for other drivers to observe you better. Now, right here we have the rear spoiler which emphasizes the sportiness that this car showcases. Right there we have the XF badge and also the Jaguar badge right here in this chrome finish, adding a sense of luxury to the car. The rear bumper also has new lines and it looks better than the older version. It has these parking sensors right over here which I have to tell you they haven't been integrated neatly. Um, they could have done a better job hiding the parking sensors and uh, well putting them better into the rear bumper but they didn't so I don't really like how they look. Down here we have the rear diffuser which emphasizes again the sportiness that this car wants to showcase. So overall the rear end of the Jaguar is not only luxurious and sporty also looks very dynamic it looks like it's moving even when it's standing still the lines are quite beautifully drawn and showcases a sense of modernism even today in 2023 now it's time to check out the boot of the car because well this car has kind of a large boot it has 440 liters of cargo space which is not necessarily bad but in this model you cannot drop the rear seats which is a shame that means that you cannot carry large luggages if you need to but if you don't need to this will be everything that you would actually need the rear boot isn't powered operated but it has soft clothes which i find it quite interesting Let's hop inside the XF cabin and what do we notice? Well, first of all, we noticed a lot of luxuriousness in this car. We have the dashboard covered in leather. The door sides are also covered in leather and also these beautiful leather seats 
add a touch of sportiness to the car because well this car has the R Sport package and well comes with sport seats. Now I have to tell you that they hug you in all the right places. The leather is very soft. In the middle of the seats you have sway which looks quite cool and also the seats have this red stitching that somehow gives a sporty feel as well. Now the steering wheel is a three spoke steering wheel. The leather is nice and soft on it. You have the R Sport badge over here and I like the controls of the steering wheel. Now these may seem like some dials, but they are not. They are actually some buttons that they provide resistance. So you, they don't spin, they just go up and down, which I think it's quite cool so let's discuss a bit about the room that this car provides for example it takes five adults with no trouble you have plenty of leg room you have plenty of headroom and the materials that this car offers gives you a very special feel for example you have here some piano black elements and aluminium finishes all over the car which emphasizes the sportiness and the luxuriousness of the car as well the sound system of the car is not Bauer and Wilkins or Meridian, it's just a standard one, but I have to tell you that it sounds incredible. There is no cheap plastic in this car, and if it is, I didn't find it, and I have to tell you that I'm quite, quite impressed. Another feature that I like about this car is the fact that when you turn on the car, the gear shifter pops out, and when you turn on the heating system or the cooling system of the car, the air vents are coming up to life because they are hidden right here in the dashboard and I have to tell you that this is quite quite a cool thing. Now even in the bottoms area on the door side the window controls you may notice this in the Range Rovers but I have to tell you that in this one they look better than in the Range Rover. They have this beautiful aluminium pattern that gives the car a very very luxurious feel. Now let's discuss about the infotainment screen of this car. First of all, it's a touch screen and it's quite, quite responsive. For example, right here in the climate controls, this is a blank spot. You, you cannot control the climate controls from here, but if you go into the climate, you can actually see that you can start it from here, which is quite interesting, but from the main screen, if you press on it, nothing happens. So let's go into the settings of the climate controls. You can see that you have the units Celsius or Fahrenheit, you have the vent rotation, and you can keep them always open, but I think it's much, much cooler when they pop out from the dashboard. Let's go a little bit into the menu and we have the audio settings. As I mentioned, this car has a standard sound system, but it sounds quite, quite good. You have a valet mode, which, well, if you press this, you have to put a code and the valet cannot enter the infotainment screen. I have to tell you that this car doesn't have Android Auto or Apple Play, but you can connect your phone through Bluetooth and you can have Bluetooth media as well. So let's go a little bit into the setup. Right here you can see that we have the fuel consumption and this car did 30 miles per gallon for the past 73,000 miles, but well, this is not quite accurate because it's been driving a lot in town. So, well, that's not quite accurate as well. Here we have the units when you can adjust how you see your fuel consumption. Vehicle security, you have a couple of features here. You have an alarm, you have a stage two locking and unlocking, the driver way locking, which means that this car automatically locks itself. The windows and mirrors controls, the gear shift paddles now this are only on sport mode you can also put them on drive and you can use the paddle shifters when the car is on drive mode tpm load settings well this is something that i have no idea what it is into the system we have the clock the feedback button the volume button and well this is kind of pretty much it so overall the infotainment system even though it's not as complicated as the modern cars are today it's very basic very simple easy to use and it has well the necessary features that you would need in a car down here we have the climate controls and the radio controls for example here we have a couple of buttons the hazard button the echo mode which well this is actually the echo mode this is um, eco stop and start button which is well annoying as usual from here we have the navigation the telephone and well here the menu 
the navigation system as you can see it looks quite modern looks good it's been updated and gives the car a modern feel on the inside as well from here we can control the climate vents and you can see that it appears on the infotainment screen also from here we can control the degrees for the left passenger and for the right passenger because it has dual climate controls from here we can control the radio and we have here the radio mode this car also has dab radio it has a cd and also an auxiliary jack and usb port which are hidden into the armrest in the central console we immediately notice this piano black finish here and well we do have two cup holders in a decent size as well right here we have the parking brake here we have the winter mode also this one is the stability control and this one is the speed limiter now here we do have this latch that opens a new compartment and here we have a lighter a cigarette lighter and this seems like an ashtray but actually isn't it's just a compartment where you can place some stuff in the armrest we do have a decent amount of storage space here as well as a auxiliary plug a usb plug and another power socket which it's quite interesting fitted here now, one thing that i don't like is the fact that the armrest is not adjustable it's just fixed here in place and if you want it to be higher or more upfront this is something that well you cannot control and one other thing that i noticed all the car has red stitching except for the armrest who doesn't have red stitching and well neither the dashboard area doesn't have a red stitching like the seats now let's discuss a bit about the gauge cluster the gauge cluster looks quite quite elegant with this aluminium finish that it has surrounding the gauges but also the font looks quite elegant there is an interesting thing from here from this button over here you can actually set some things into the middle of the screen which you can see that uh, well it's not very customizable whatsoever in that screen you can only see the radio information the gps information and well the gears you are in and also uh, some facts about the fuel consumption but other than that there isn't much information in the screen in the gauge cluster let's discuss about the rear seats of the jaguar for example here in this armrest you have two cup holders which well i don't really agree with them they are wide but they are not deep so you cannot place large beverages here and that's a shame because well the back seat is quite quite comfortable the same quality material that you have in the front you have also here you can notice the leather stitching on the door side and well the leather that the door side also has and this beautiful piano black trim that it's incorporated into the door also you have two speakers over here which i told you it sounds really good right here in the middle we do have two air vents and well another power socket and i do like the fact that you have a lot of power sockets into this car you notice the jaguar written right here into the air vents which is a neat feature so the rear seats are comfortable you have plenty of legroom plenty of headroom and well i can honestly tell you that you can fit three of me here and we can sit here without any issues it doesn't matter how long we're gonna travel in this car because it's very comfortable and you have plenty plenty of room the interior of the jaguar is very comfortable it looks quite good and overall it's a quite quite nice place to be in now it's time to drive the xf so we're gonna put the seat belt on because this is something that we do all the time wait yes like like this we're gonna put the car in drive mode because i do like this gear knob it's quite interesting so let's put the car in drive and let's drive off first of all the car feels quite fast and agile it's sitting quite well to the ground uh, it has these 18 inch wheels and well the sport suspension because being an r sport comes with sport suspension now i have to tell you that the balance between comfort and roughness is quite there i think that if this car would have been fitted with 19 inch wheel uh well the comfort would have been compromised but the 18 inch wheels look good and uh, well they are not as rough as the 19 inch wheels 
The steering is precise and the car feels very nimble on countryside roads as well. Now when you put the car on sport you have to press a little bit on the gear shifter and switch it to the right and immediately the gearbox drops a couple of speeds to adjust itself to be more responsive when you need it to and even though this car goes from 0 to 60 in 8.5 seconds I have to tell you that when you put your foot down it quite pushes now the engine well it has 187 horsepower which seems enough goes very well against the competition uh, against the BMW 5 series uh, 520 and uh, well Mercedes 2.2 E-Class uh, well Audi's uh, 2 liter diesel engine I have to tell you that it is a little bit slower than this one but this Jaguar actually provides a good amount of power and torque and the car feels actually quite quite good on the road now regarding how practical this car is well it's a five-seater you have plenty of legroom headroom for all passengers you have a decent sized boot so i think it's quite practical regarding it looks well you already know my opinion it looks quite good it actually it's quite a stunning car and uh, with this facelift that it got it looks more sleeker and uh, sportier than ever Regarding the whole materials that this car gathers inside, well, they are top quality materials and having leather all over uh, enhances the luxuriousness of the car. On the outside, the Jaguar stands out pretty well and uh, with this R Sport package delivers a sense of sportiness beyond Jaguar's brand, if you know what I'm saying. It's a big difference between the SE version and the R Sport. And the way it drives makes you feel a little bit like a royalty. Everything in it seems nice, pleasant to touch. Uh, you have a special feeling when you drive a Jaguar. Now regarding reliability, well, <laughs> this is a fun thing. I've heard on some forums and I've read on some forums as well that um, they have a couple of electrical issues. For example, sometimes the sat nav, and not just the sat nav, the whole infotainment system shuts down the music everything completely shuts down and this can be annoying also there's uh, some problems with the windows with the electric system of the windows uh, what can i tell you this might be true or it might not because well i had cars who had a couple of problems and other people didn't experience the problems that i experienced with my car so uh, this jaguar actually uh, doesn't have as many problems as you think of course they have been noted as unreliable cars but Jaguar actually puts an effort to stop spreading these rumors um, what I want to mention is the wind noise and the road noise that you get in the car the car it's pretty quiet inside uh, it's not as quiet as an XJ so you do have some amount of road noise and wind noise and tire noise but this is not a high-end luxury sedan. It's not like the XJ. And well, I have to tell you that it goes quite well against the Mercedes E-Class and the 5 Series and the A6. It's quite, quite there. And somehow you get a better and a special feeling when you drive one of these. The feeling that you have driving one of these is a special feeling. So. Overall, I do like the Jaguar XF. I do think it's a brilliant car and I like it due to the fact that it gives a sense of luxuriousness beyond the competition. It feels much, much better inside. Now on the exterior, well, this might be an acquired taste, but I have to tell you that it still, still looks good in my opinion. So that was it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching and subscribing to my YouTube channel. I hope you liked the video. If you liked it, press a thumbs up and well, subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in the next episode. In the meantime, peace and blessings to all of you. And well, I will still have to enjoy a little bit more of this car. Have a good day.